Want to learn how to get a business analyst job? What a business analyst job description is in the first place? Business analyst salary, business analyst interview questions, how to put together a business analyst resume, and overall how to become a business analyst? Congratulations, business analyst jobs can be rewarding and you found the right business analyst training series to answer all those things. I've been a top performing professional for 22 years and I'm going to teach you all these business analyst skills that I learned through trial and error in a small fraction of that time. So what is a business analyst? Let's check out today's exciting topic to find out. So if you're writing up a business analyst resume trying to get a business analyst job, you need to know about business analyst frameworks and that's what we're going to talk about today. So frameworks and methodologies are really important to a business analyst. I have the top five today and if you stick through all the way to the end, you might be surprised by number five. So the first one is the BABOK, uh, B-A-B-O-K. It stands for the Business Analyst Body of Knowledge. And this is literally a book that teaches business analysts how to be business analysts. It's a prerequisite for some of the major certifications for business analysis. And it walks through a comprehensive treatment of the International Institute of Business Analysis as they define business analysis. It provides a standardized framework for how to be a business analyst, including tasks that they do, techniques, approaches, and competencies. It includes stuff like requirements gathering, business process modeling, and stakeholder management, all the things we've talked about in some more detail so far on this channel. So that's the Business Analyst Body of Knowledge, or BABOC for short, and that is put out by the International Institute of Business Analysis. So framework number one was a book. Framework number two is a methodology and it's called Agile. So what is Agile? Well, in business analysis or in software projects as a whole, there's two major methodologies and flavors of them also, but there's Agile or Waterfall methodology that will be part of your project life cycle. We'll talk about Agile first. So Agile is iterative, it goes back and forth. You don't build too much at one time. It's a really confined scope. Scope, literally, if you've never heard the word before, means what, what is the bucket of things we're building and what is outside of that bucket that we're not building. That's what scope is. So again, Agile is iterative or incremental in nature. It goes back and forth. We build this, stakeholder look at it. Do you want anything changed? No, we build the next little thing. So it emphasizes collaboration in that way being flexible, not being under a rigid methodology of one thing following the last. And it delivers value in shorter iterations that you call sprints. That's what they call them in Agile methodology. So there's different kinds of Agile. One of them that's well known is called Scrum and one is called Kanban, but they both promote adaptive planning, continuous feedback loops, and frequent stakeholder involvement. In an agile environment, a business analyst has to maintain a backlog, so you may have many items on a backlog, each of which is small in scope, and they need to pick off requirements one by one. So as they complete one and it's accepted, they pick the next one off of the backlog. So that's how agile methodology works. They're small pieces, and in some ways, I feel like they're more valuable to customers. It's definitely more of a trend these days than Waterfall. And I think that's because although you're not completing the complete set of requirements that a customer has asked for, you're providing them many more opportunities to be pleased along the way with the sense that you've worked on something smaller so you have a better chance of getting it right rather than being overwhelmed with a really big project with many potential points of failure and having the customer have to wait a long time to maybe still be disappointed, right? So instead of having everything hinge on one ending of a project and the customer likes it or they don't, with Agile, you might have 20 different sprints where they have a chance to be pleased many times along the way. So that's kind of the one of the main advantages of Agile. So if you stuck with me this far through the video, I hope you're getting some great value and want to be notified every time I drop the next piece of training in this series, go ahead and subscribe to How to Be a Business Analyst below and click that bell button for all notifications. Once you've done that, drop me a comment in the comments below letting me know that you subscribed and I'll go ahead and try to answer all of those comments personally. Framework number three for business analysts is, as I mentioned earlier, the waterfall methodology. And the way waterfall works is, as you might visualize it, it's a waterfall. So it comes down to a plateau, it comes down some more and down some more. So in waterfall methodology, you have a phase, 
that depends on the previous phase finishing before it can begin. And you may have, and you often do have more than only two phases. So I'll give you an example. You may have a phase of familiarization. Your sales team is getting you familiar with what was sold, the scope of what was sold. So you're prepared to push back if the customer tries to go outside of that scope within the given time and financial restraints. Then there may be a kickoff phase where you and all of the external teams involved get together and we talk about the excitement of what we're about to build and the business objectives and initiatives we're trying to meet with this bit of work. Then you might move into a requirements gathering phase where you learn all about the customer's business processes, which of those processes is in question here, where the business problem is in that flow that we're trying to correct. And then you might move into a design phase after that where you design a solution that you think is going to be able to fulfill those particular requirements. And then you may move into a testing phase where you do some internal testing or have some peers do testing of your work to the point where you feel like it's in a good place and of good quality to move it over to the customer in their own environment. And you deploy it to their environment and then the customer does their own testing. They provide any defects they find. You triage them to say which are the most vital and address those first and so forth. And then at the end of a project, you might have a handover phase where you hand over what you've built to your support team so that if your customer uncovers other things in the future, they have a dedicated team to help them fix those things while you've moved on to your next project. That's a waterfall methodology. And as you can see, it took me a while to even describe it all. So you can imagine it takes longer to get through all of these dependent phases, which in one sense is negative because the customer, as I mentioned earlier, is waiting longer for an opportunity to be pleased or discouraged. But in another sense, it might be a bit more structured and have less chance for things going awry because you're stopping and documenting every prerequisite before you move on to the next phase. So again, it could take longer, but you're, you could be more sure that it's correct. So you have to balance those two methodologies and see which one fits better for your customer and your project. Hey, so one more quick tip for you. If you're thinking, hey, I have a great career too where I can share all these insights on the internet. How do I do that? I have a couple great links for you in the description below. One is Make Money Matt, who teaches how to monetize your skills and abilities online better than almost anybody I've found. And the second one is Teachable, a platform where you can create your very own online courses. Check the links out in the description below. Framework number four for business analysts is Lean. And Lean can be applied in agile methodologies, but Lean in and of itself is just an idea of systemically reducing waste, increasing efficiency, and improving on quality by doing these things. So you reduce the potential points of failure so that your process runs more quickly and more efficiently, and hopefully the quality is better because you've taken out unnecessary steps. When I did my Six Sigma green belt training way back in the day, we had to draw what was called a spaghetti diagram. And I'll try to get an example to show you here on the screen where I drew everywhere I walked during the day to get information from different people in my office. And it looked like a bowl of spaghetti when we were done. So I was asked as part of the project to try to make that process more efficient. How could I have accomplished everything I accomplished that day much more efficiently by making the paths more direct or making fewer of them? And so this is the idea of lean, reducing waste in unnecessary steps, which hopefully in the long run will result in a faster, more efficient process, but also a process of higher quality. If you've stuck with me this long, congratulations. Here is framework number five for business analysts. And for me, that is, it's a must to learn the principles of business coaching. People in your projects, whether it be your leadership or anyone else, will often use the word coaching to mean something negative or something reprimanding someone for something they've done wrong, or even to be synonymous with training, teaching someone something they don't know. None of this is coaching. Coaching is literally uncovering blind spots for people who did not think to go down that path because they were too busy focused on something else. It's literally being too close to a problem to see what's all around it and relying on a third party to ask you whether you've considered those things and maybe you didn't for a good reason. But business coaching for me is a vital framework that all business analysts should learn. Um, coaches are typically, in my experience, I've seen given jobs as coaches before they've been trained in coaching. 
So they approach their coachees, the recipients of the coaching, like direct reports to a manager where they're trying to train them or teach them. And that is not what coaching is. Again, coaching is uncovering blind spots. So if someone is struggling with a business problem, you may say, well, have you ever thought of checking on process step number two? And they may say, well, no, I didn't because we've never had a problem with that before. And then you can say, okay, well, what environmental factors have changed during this quarter when you've started seeing this problem? And through a series of questions where they're answering themselves without you providing the answer, your stakeholder will first of all feel empowered because they'll feel that and they'll be right to feel that the answer came from within them instead of being thrown at them or forced on them. And second of all, everybody will feel like a collaborative team in dreaming up this solution that solves this particular business problem. So again, framework number five that is crucial for a business analyst is learning the principles of business coaching. Thanks again for joining me and uh, we'll catch you again next time on the next training video.